creeping towards Christmas. I'm Rick Fulbaum. And I'm Sean Gables. Many hospitals already overwhelmed as the Omicron variant surges. The holiday season could make matters worse. Today, Georgia reported more than 8,000 new COVID cases. That's the most since September. We have team coverage talking COVID, travel, weather, you name it. Let's start with Haley Mason, who's live at a testing site in South DeKalb. What are you seeing, Haley? Wick, we're live off of Candler Road at the Viral Solutions testing site, and I just talked to a person who just got a COVID test after waiting in the line behind me for more than two hours. People today going to great lengths to try to make sure they're safe before the Christmas holiday. DeKalb County Commissioner Ted Terry is not only promoting COVID testing, but also pushing cash incentives to help children get COVID vaccines. Working with um, CEO Michael Thurman, uh, DeKalb County was the first uh, county in Georgia to approve $100 cash incentive cards for vaccinations at the time for adults. Now in DeKalb, the cash can go to eligible children as well. The $100 cash cards are a really good incentive, and we've seen already uh, close to 5,000 additional vaccinations have been given out over these last several months. Vaccines, a major part of the fight against the Omicron variant, as drivers across the city crawl through long lines to get tested. I mean, it's worth the wait once, once you get in line, you know, it's worth the wait. Everett Ligon decided to start bringing rapid tests directly to the customer, setting up his own mobile rapid testing operation called Filter Screening Services. I make house calls. Um, essentially, I can meet you anywhere within the state lines of Georgia. We can meet at a parking in a parking lot, grocery store, at your house, at my office. I have an office in Peachtree Corners. Ligon says he started out in 2016 doing drug testing for companies and then recently expanded. When the COVID hit, um, it was right in my wheelhouse, so I just got a few pieces of extra qualifications and paperwork and testing for COVID now. And the results at many testing sites are coming back with more positive cases. Hospitals becoming overwhelmed again. In the last day, bed capacity showing a slight improvement going from 86% to 84 and ICU bed capacity going from 82 to 81. Commissioner Terry still urging everyone to wear proper masks. I love wearing my cloth mask, uh, but you got to wear the N95 mask. And so if anyone has any difficulty getting those N95 masks, the ones that are tight fitting around your face, put the cloth mask over it. You know, they call it double masking. If you're going to be out shopping for Christmas presents at a gathering, um, uh, if you can get tested before you go to your family gathering, even better. And if you are looking for a testing site like the one behind me or a rapid test at a local store, we have some resources for you on our CBS 46 website. Click on a link there and you can find the closest testing location and the closest place to find a test before the holiday. Reporting live in South DeKalb County, Haley Mason, CBS 46 News. Thanks, Haley. The FDA has authorized a second pill to fight COVID-19. The treatment from Merck is for high risk adults who have already tested positive for the virus and it comes a day after the agency granted emergency use authorization for Pfizer's more effective pill. The White House warns the pills will not be widely available though for months. Despite the COVID surge, today is expected to be one of the busiest travel days of the holiday period. Triple A says around 6 million people are flying nationwide, many of them right here in Atlanta. CBS 46's Mary Smith continues our holiday team coverage live from Hartsfield Jackson and Mary, what are you seeing there? Well, an airport spokesperson says they're expecting about the same amount of people to travel through the airport during this holiday travel season as 2019. And we are seeing a lot of bars and restaurants open, but some places are still looking like the juice place right behind me and this place directly next to me. This Annie Ann's is empty. About 256,000 passengers were expected to pass through Hartsfield Jackson Thursday in the middle of a major travel wave. From December 20th to January 4th, about 3.7 million people are expected to pass through Atlanta's airport. I was expecting more cars, more people coming to the airport, but it doesn't seem that busy. Inside, some food and beverage places remain lifeless. Some with signs like this one advertising they're looking for employees. We have 156 food and beverage options here at Hartsville Jackson. 126 of them are open. That's more than 80%. We've also made sure that passengers have an option on every single concourse for food and beverage. Airport spokesperson Andy Gobiel says they typically have two hiring events every year, but last year they had five, and there's more to come in 2022. 
I think there's plenty of options in the airport. I mean, it seems like the tea concourse has the most, most of the ones that are closed as far as I've seen. In Concourse T, we saw several places closed, but others busy and serving hot meals. Doesn't been that bad, just a little bit longer lines. One woman tells us she was having a hard time finding what she was looking for, so she was on her way to another terminal. I just looked up that there's some Starbucks on Terminal C, so I might jump on the train and go find it. And Gobile says they expect another hiring event to happen later this winter. We're live from the airport tonight. I'm Mary Smith, CBS 46 News. Mary, thank you. Another major Atlanta bridge scare is finally over. Investors, inspectors rather, gave an all clear to the ramp from I-75 South to I-285 West. An 18-wheeler crashed and caught fire this morning. You can see the scorched pillar and the overpass there. GDOT crews say the surface of the column was damaged but found no problems with the structure. Stay up to date on all the news surrounding the COVID-19 surge and holiday travel by downloading the free CBS 46 streaming app. You can get breaking alerts sent right to your phone. Right now, let's take a sneak peek outside. Another chilly day. We're in store for some chilly winter conditions tonight, but then we're going to get a warm up. That's right. Meteorologist Fred Campagna joining us now with Atlanta's most accurate forecast. Does Santa have different weights, mm. you know, in of terms suits? of like, of suits, yeah. Yeah, I saw Ella tweeted that he was showing up in a Speedo this year. So <laughs> hopefully, that's, <laughs> hopefully that's not the case, but yeah, of course he's got a lighter suit uh, and he'll need it in North Georgia this year. So let's check out this beautiful, gorgeous sunset over Marietta Square. Man, it's nice out there. People out doing some shopping this evening, and that temperature is starting to fall off. 54 right now in Atlanta. We made it up to 61. 49 right now for Rome. 51 for Covington. Uh, it'll get through the 40s and into the 30s overnight tonight. So seasonably cold tonight. Not as cold as it was uh, this morning, tomorrow morning. 32 Athens and Canton. 41, though, for Atlanta. Look at tomorrow. Sunshine. A few clouds out there. But the temperature makes it up into the middle 60s tomorrow afternoon. 10 degrees warmer than normal. No weather concerns at all for Christmas Eve, and it gets even warmer on Christmas Day. We'll talk about that, and I'll give you an outlook. Give you the uh, outlook for the nationwide holiday travel. Let you know if there are any airports that are experiencing delays coming up. All right, thank you, Fred. New developments tonight. Charges now being filed against an alleged accomplice in the case of a triple murder at a Cobb County golf course. You remember this story? The shootings happened at Pine Tree Country Club on the 3rd of July. One of the victims, a well-known golf pro, the other two kidnapped and later killed on the course. CBS 46's Megan Packer live in the newsroom for us tonight looking into this new warrant, Megan. And Rick and Sean, we are learning more from this warrant tonight. It outlines what police say happened right before two of the victims were driven to the golf course and killed. Tonight, police are looking for the man they say played a role in the kidnapping. It was a crime that sent shockwaves through Cobb County and beyond. A triple shooting on the 10th hole at Pine Tree Country Club near Kennesaw in July. Brian Roden is already charged in the murders of 76-year-old Paul Pearson and 46-year-old Henry Valdez, both from out of state. They were found tied up and shot in the back of Pearson's truck on the green. The third victim, beloved golf pro Gene Siller. Police say the 46-year-old was shot and killed when he went to figure out why the truck was on the course. Now, almost six months later, we are learning more about a second suspect in the case. Justin Pruitt of South Carolina is charged with two counts of felony kidnapping. A criminal warrant says on the afternoon of July 3rd in an industrial area along Jonesboro Road in Clayton County, he bound Pearson and Valdez with duct tape and zip ties against their will. The warrant states Pruitt then played a part in transporting the men to the country club nearly 50 miles north. When they arrived there, police say it was Brian Roden who shot Pearson in the back, buttock, leg and arms and shot Valdez in the head. And still so many questions about this case, what the connection was between everybody and how they ended up at that golf course. We have learned Pruitt was indicted in South Carolina in 2019 in connection to a cocaine trafficking operation. But again, tonight, police are looking for him. At last check, he was not in custody. Live in the newsroom, I'm Megan Packer, CBS 46 News. Megan, thank you. And new details tonight, a man in custody accused of killing a teenager during a suspected robbery. Henry County Police just arrested Johnny Boynton III. He's charged in the murder of 16 year old Azira Miller. Police say Miller was shot on this road in Stockbridge on Monday. Investigators say more arrests will be coming. Today, family and friends saying final goodbyes to five people killed in a 
devastating Decatur house fire. A funeral and celebration of life held this afternoon at Rainbow Park Baptist Church. Terriana Regular, her daughters Angel and Delia, and two uncles, Timothy Regular and Pedro Coney, died in that fire last week. A sixth family member, Diane Regular, died at the hospital early this week. Family members suspect a space heater started the flames. New at six, organizers behind the Atlanta Beltline Trail say they are on track to complete the full 22-mile loop by the year 2030. Beltline leaders announced today they have surpassed the $300 million funding mark for trail construction. The funding is made up of donations as well as local and federal grants. Right now, only eight miles of the 22-mile path have been paved. It is expected to cost $350 million to complete the entire trail. A crime alert tonight. Christmas donations meant for families in need targeted by a criminal, a thief using a sledgehammer to break into the empty stocking fund warehouse in southwest Atlanta. Tonight, the group asking for your help. CBS 46's Savannah Louie is live at the warehouse tonight. Savannah, you've been talking to the organization. This is going to hurt them bad. Yeah, they say what they need most right now is more time just two days before Christmas after spending most of yesterday with police. Now I spoke with the executive director. She tells me that a thief broke through this concrete wall, spent more than an hour filling up bags with toys before simply just walking off. The man you see here carrying bags filled with gifts deserves nothing but a lump of coal. Somebody just keeps coming in and in the most creative and aggressive ways. Um, you know, I'm not sure how to, to stop somebody from coming in through a cinder block wall. Amanda Hunt says this holiday Grinch broke through a concrete wall to get inside the warehouse for the empty stocking fund, an organization that gives to families in need. All the way down at the end of B. He took bags of toys, Bluetooth speakers and stuffed animals worth thousands of dollars. I, I, I was just absolutely in shock. I mean, I, you know, we have had incidents, uh, repeated incidents recently, and we think it's uh, likely the same culprit. Hunt says she thinks this man is responsible for nearly a dozen thefts here, previously posing as a volunteer and even breaking through a skylight for gifts not meant for him. Just discovered something else that he took. It's just, just, just low. It's terrible. Who could do that? Like they're giving. Why take from someone that's giving? You know, while replacing stolen gifts with substitutes, the community adds their own contributions. I saw on the news this morning that these guys had gotten grinched and uh, I wanted to do a little bit, little something to help out. The holiday spirit is stronger than ever right now. And I, I told somebody earlier, I said, you know, I cried yesterday because my heart was broken and I have teared up more than once today because my heart is filled. All right, now we're leaving you with some good news here. Along with donating toys, people from the community have donated more than $50,000 in just the past day. Meantime, police continue to search for the suspect. But for now, reporting live from Fulton County, Savannah Louis, CBS 46 News. We don't often get to tell about happy endings. This is a good one. Thank you, Savannah. New video tonight. Crooks caught on camera breaking into an Atlanta production business. The plug ATL off of Johnson Road was struck or rather it was hit around five o'clock this morning. We're told the suspects used a crowbar to get into the front door and all more than $100,000 worth of video equipment was taken. Call Atlanta police if you have any information. Right now, a community is in mourning over the sudden loss of a Roswell High School football star. 18 year old Robbie Roper passed away Tuesday. His coach posted this picture on Twitter today of Robbie's jersey hanging in the locker room, flowers underneath. Just weeks ago, the quarterback led his team to the quarterfinals of the state high school playoffs. We're told Robbie was being looked at as a prospect for the University of Florida. Robbie was such a great young man, um, you know, did everything the right way, um, did everything he was supposed to, um, you know, was on that precipice of graduating, getting to go play uh, college football. Um, so, you know, it's just sad to see it taken away so quickly. Funeral services are still in the works. We'll let you knew, know as soon as they're announced. A five-year-old boy expected to survive after another accidental shooting in the metro. It happened at the Camden Vintage Apartments on Jackson Street in the Sweet Auburn neighborhood. Police say the boy was shot in the foot after getting his hands on an unsecured gun. The child was taken to a hospital by his grandmother. Now, this shooting comes just one day after a three-year-old was shot in South Fulton. Police tell CBS 46 the toddler accidentally shot himself after finding an unsecured gun under a bed. Thankfully, that little boy is expected to be okay. 
According to BradyUnited.org, nearly 8,000 children and teenagers are shot in the U.S. every year. That's nearly 22 children each day. On average, eight kids are shot accidentally per day, many times due to improper gun storage. Wow. News tonight, a longtime Atlanta bakery closing its doors for good this week. The owners of Rhodes Bakery shutting down their location on Cheshire Bridge Road. This bakery has been open since 1953. Their last day is tomorrow. The owners tell us that they're keeping their location in Roswell open. Oh, CBS 46 Sports with Emily Gagnon. All right, guys, since the NFL changed its COVID-19 protocols over the weekend, we hadn't seen any new Falcons players on the team's reserve COVID-19 list. That is until today. Defensive lineman Marlon Davidson was added to it. Those new NFL protocols I mentioned don't require players to be tested for coronavirus unless they're showing symptoms. They are the only league. The NFL is the only league doing that right now. And since Sunday, guys, seven Hawks players have entered the league's health and safety protocols. One was added today. It was six. They're without key players like superstar Trey Young, Clint Capella, Kevin Herter, Danilo Gallinari, and more. Today, head coach Nate McMillan, he, know, he, he talked about what it was like to wait around before games on players' results. We're living in that world uh, right now with, uh, with the protocols and, uh, you know, guys testing. Uh, so we are still waiting uh, on a, a phone call uh, to see if uh, Kevin and Clinton. And the dogs wrapped up their final practice in Athens before Christmas break yesterday. They won't be back on campus until the 26th when they fly down to Miami for the Orange Bowl. Most players have gone home to see their families, so coronavirus is a big concern ahead of their college football playoff semifinal game against Michigan. A large portion of our team has been uh, vaccinated and continue to be diligent about that and ask the guys that aren't to be extra safe. And uh, we've taken some precautions around the building. Uh, to be smart, certainly uh, that time of year, you know, we went through the kind of, I don't call it a flu season, but we had a little bout with the flu there that, that, that made me concerned as well about COVID. So all teams in our area are definitely dealing with coronavirus right now, and it doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. Sean. All right, thank you. Thanks for watching CBS 46 News. Watch us live wherever you are, our mobile and our streaming news app. You can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.